Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Rich Malik. I'm the Director of Mobile Threat Intelligence here at Zimperium. I'm going to be your speaker today. Now, some quick uh, highlights about the presentation. This is being recorded, so for any reason you are late or you need to drop off early, uh, do not fret. We will send you the recording. If you have any questions, it could be in the technical nature, it could be in the product nature, it could be questioning some of the data I'm about to present, Whatever it might be, do not hesitate to throw it into the questions box uh, inside the chat. Um, I will do my best to answer all the questions that come through. If I have to answer it through in midway through the presentation, don't worry, I will take care of it. Uh, with that being said, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Today's presentation is the mobile threat patterns across the UK. This is a Q3 analysis of the threats that we are seeing on the mobile security space um, impacting enterprise connected mobile devices. And so what that means is a mobile device, be it tablet or mobile phone, that is being used in a corporate environment that has a Zimperium product installed on it we do get uh, anonymized threat telemetry back from that device. And we are able to analyze and see what the trends in the data. This allows us to uh, support our customers in the region with uh, more education, as well as to understand the threats that are uh, changing and how they're changing. Because as I like to say, the threats are like seasons. They do change here and there. I want to start with this quote, though. And Matt, uh, big points if you recognize the screen, the picture in the background. But there's more targets out there for bank robbers to hit. Now, this is Frank Bosch uh, of the Federal Bureau of Investigations here in the United States. Came out with this quote in 2006. Now, specifically, he was ta talking about uh, a rise in bank robberies that were occurring in Chicago. Uh, and 2006, what was going on in the physical space where the banks were opening up more branches all over the city and all over the state, um, they were trying to give more access to the, to the money that their customers had. And as more bank branches opened up, they noticed that there were more bank robberies, more physical bank robberies. Now, this quote, I feel, is very relevant to the mobile security space as we talk about it. You know, I want you to go about this whole presentation as I'm presenting the data and the threats and the risks with the understanding of what I'm this kind of mindset. The mobile device represents an ATM to your full personal and corporate data. It has access to your credit cards, has access to your work, has access to your money, has access to everything. In some ways, a mobile device is actually even more powerful than a traditional laptop or desktop because it is constantly connected and because the applications are designed for ease of use. It doesn't take much to log in, to transfer, to make changes that can impact your financial stability as well as your corporate stability. As we have seen with breaches over the last year, the mobile device has become the key to the kingdom in terms of hacking into corporate enterprise systems. Now, why is that? Because the mobile device represents the bank branch. It represents the access that the bank robbers, the hackers, the malicious actors out there need and want to get your data. Your data is money. You have spent time and energy investing into it. Your business has spent time and money investing into the data that's being produced. And when a malicious actor comes in and breaks into your system to steal your data, they are stealing your money. The mobile device represents that access and it's the largest unaddressed component of the, mo of the attack surface for any enterprise. I want you to think about how much access and capability you have from your mobile endpoint. What can you do? What can you download? What passwords are available there? How easy is it for phishing links to be delivered? The mobile device is largely unprotected. And even in an environment where mobile device management is used, mobile device management is, you know, limited because it's a management tool, not a security tool. It's designed to enforce policies and control, but it isn't designed to protect 
and defend. So, as there's more mobile devices connected into your enterprise, there's more opportunities for these bank robbers, these malicious actors, to steal your money. So what do the security risks look like? Now, all these stats are um, within from our 2022 Global Mobile Threat Report, at least this slide, um, but I do have updated stats coming into the next couple of slides. Last year, the mobile space experienced a 466% increase in zero-day in-the-wild attacks using vulnerabilities. Now, what does that mean? That means that I think it was one in three zero-day exploits used in an attack last year was specifically targeting a mobile device. These zero-day vulnerabilities, which you know many of us are categorized and track as CVEs, were used in attacks to exploit and take advantage of unprotected endpoints. And it was a 466% increase. It was the largest increase we had seen in any category. Now, there were 52 zero-day vulnerabilities in all detected last year. That means they were the zero-day vulnerabilities were taken advantage of, exploited, and then the public became known of it. There's 52 of them. And 30% of those represented mobile. On the network side, the mobile device, 20% of enterprise mobile devices experienced network-based attacks. I'm going to show a couple of examples of what a network-based attack looks like. 75% of new of phishing sites are now optimized for mobile meaning that the attackers know that mobile devices represent a very easy vector to have a victim fall for a phishing link. And 42% of organizations are reporting unauthorized applications and resources accessing enterprise data. The mobile device, it's not just the phone, it's not just the user, it's the websites, it's the networks that they're connecting to. It's the applications that are being downloaded for you know, easy use. Without the visibility, without the threat telemetry provided on that, the mobile device is an unaddressed attack surface. So I promise here's some updated stats. I talked about the global mobile threat, the uh, individual exploits. We see here uh, in 2021, there was uh, over, I'm sorry, I was said 10 before, it's, I'm, I'm staying corrected, it was uh, 18 18 zero-day vulnerabilities used in the wild against a mobile device. Now, in 2022, we're at nine. And that's uh, representing 30% still of all the zero-day vulnerabilities attacking mobile devices. Now, some of you are thinking, well, you know, Richard, these are clearly all just Android. I want to change your mind on this one. Uh, surprisingly enough, over 65% of all zero day vulnerabilities against mobile devices in the history of our tracking all the way back to 2015 are targeting iOS. And in this year alone, seven of those nine are iOS specific zero day vulnerabilities. So whereas we're, you know, the largest marketing engines in the world from Google and Apple are saying that their devices are secure, the data says something completely different. And the malicious actors know that the mobile device represents the key to the kingdom because of this increase in zero-day vulnerabilities. Now, we're seeing them on not just the application side, but uh, or on the endpoint side, but on the application side as well. Mobile apps have critical vulnerabilities that are being revealed that can potentially exploit security controls of the device, revealing data, and even de-encrypting some of the data that is being shared from the device up to the cloud. So as these mobile devices are connected into your corporate network, you have personal and critical information connecting in. What does the security landscape look like? And it's not just these attack vectors. Spyware has been in the news so much since Pegasus. Now, Pegasus, we are all aware of. Pegasus is the big name. It's the big scary beast that impacted 50,000 victims worldwide, targeting journalists, politicians, human rights activists, and more. Used by nation states and malicious governments to spy on all these people. But Pegasus is not the only one that exists. Spyware has been deployed out and has been increasing in impact and use 
over the last few years because the mobile device is a mobile tracking device. It's a surveillance tool. And with the right spyware installed on it, a malicious actor of some kind, no matter their origin, can gather a significant amount of data, either for blackmail or whatever else they need to use it for. Maybe they're building up dossiers and itinerary. Who knows? We've seen spyware being used in corporate espionage as well. And we'll be talking about this next month or later this month, but spyware is also being commoditized where anybody can go out and purchase it on the market. And you don't even need access to the dark web. So from Spain to Kazakhstan to Russian, all the way over to Greeks, we have victims on a global scale being targeted by this spyware, looking at the mobile device, spying on their iPhones, spying on their Android devices to get the data that they want. And just to lament that it's not just us who's talking about this threat, Maddie Stone and Clement Lacine from the uh, Google Threat Analysis Group or Google Project Zero, if you're aware of them, their job is to track all the threats and risks and security implications against uh, Google products, and more. They also speak about more on the iOS side. But Maddie Stone and, and Clement uh, Lesinge came up with this quote when they were covering some zero-day vulnerabilities attacking uh, Android devices last year. The growth of mobile platforms has resulted in an increase in the number of products that actors want capabilities for. So as the mobile device has increased the uh, potential attack surface for an enterprise, what it has also done has put a larger target on the back of these enterprises. It's becoming the tool, the access, the, the, the component that the threat actors want to break into because they know how unprotected the devices are. So I promised data and here's some data. Now, as I mentioned, uh, this data is being provided in an anonymous, anonymized GDPR compliant fashion uh, from devices that are protected by Zimperium products and devices and applications. These are all uh, enterprise grade threats that are being reported back to us. Uh, I will also do a caveat that I can only fit 5,000 dots on a, uh, on a single map. That's just the limitations of my mapping software. Um, but as we get into some of the, and get down into London where it gets a little bit more interesting, you'll see the density of these threats. <coughs> Pardon me. As we see here within the space, well, as we see here within the space of uh, the United Kingdom from 2022 year to date, we see a myriad of threats throughout the whole country. Down south, we see a large number of scans and man-in-the-middle attacks. Those are network attacks. Up there in Birmingham, up into Manchester, we see danger zones where mobile devices have encountered uh, so many threats to, their, to them uh, that we have actually categorized it as a danger zone that gets reported directly to the mobile device that they are in potential danger space. Over into Edinburgh, we see a little yellow dot there in the middle, traffic manipulation. But we see these densities around high populous areas. And it's all because the mobile device is mobile. And so are the threats. They don't just stay in one place. Now, looking here at London, we see up there in the top left corner, a large danger zone surrounded by a significant number of man-in-the-middle attacks. Now, man-in-the-middle attack, that's where uh, network uh, is going to be redirecting the traffic. We'll be changing some uh, components within it. I will caveat that these categories represent 78 different um, threats that we track within the mobile uh, mobile security space. So we don't know which specific man in the middle attack that is. We just know that it falls under that category. Just north of London, up in Cheshunt, we see rogue access points encountered by mobile devices. And then down over into Re uh, Reading, we have a significant number of scans, as well as malware detected. That's that little bit gray-blue dot that we see there. 
as we get into London, the density is so great of the threats detected by the mobile devices that we actually can't just differentiate, you know, different areas, different regions. We can see it all following the Thames, but we see little red dots of compromised devices popping through. Now, compromised device, uh, that could be uh, a jailbroken device, a device that has its security controls turned off, um, and malware that has been installed. Now, if we get down into bank area, we see again over on that left side, a nice little black dot, big black dot of danger zones encountered. But around the bank area where there's a significant number of financial institutions, big businesses, even over with the, uh, with the, uh, the royal family around their residences, we see man in the middle attacks, Malware detected, significant amount of malware detections, as well as compromised devices throughout the whole city and spread throughout the whole place. Now, one big caveat on that data, data it's not just 5,000 dots, but these are only the Zimperium protected endpoints. To quote Donald Rumsfeld, Secretary of um, one of the secretaries under the Bush administration after 9 11, he said, We don't know what we don't know. So as Imperium continues to uh, get installed on more enterprise devices to protect the BYOD and corporate owned uh, devices that are connecting into the enterprise systems, we receive more data. And the more data that we receive, the better the map looks. And as we continue to uh, see this data from London, we are seeing a transition uh, month over month. I don't have the month by month maps loaded up here, but I can tell you that when we see man in the middle attacks and we see scans, after that, we typically see malware detections. We see phishing links, compromise our malicious websites encounters. Those are phishing links. We even see an increase in danger zones. And this all follows along the attack chain that we often see against traditional endpoints. Now, the big thing that we need to remember is that the mobile device is a computer. It's not a phone anymore. It's a computer. And the same attack methodology that malicious actors are using against traditional endpoints, they are using against the mobile device. And so we see the reconnaissance through the network scans. Then we see the implementation of the attack, and then we see the, uh, the compromise, leading to phishing links being clicked on, leading to malicious applications being sideloaded, leading to data being revealed and compromised and enterprises left at risk. These are trends that we continue to see all over the world. Now, this is just going from the larger UK down into London. But the trends shift from city to city, from country to country. And as the world is continuing to get more and more mobile, we're traveling more, we have the holiday season coming up. All these devices that are connected back into the enterprise system are traveling as well. So a question I'd like to ask as we look at this map, the mobile device represents, represents an unsecured endpoint using your data, accessing your data. But as they exit your corporate security infrastructure, they are taking that access with them. So do you know where your corporate data is being accessed? Do you know how it's being accessed? Do you know where it's being downloaded? Do you know where it is? Because as your employees move around, they might be you know, going home, they might be going on vacation, connecting into rogue networks you know, to check that one work email that gets sent to them over the holidays. They're also putting your corporate data at risk. So I promised I would show what an attack chain looked like on a malicious network. So earlier this year, uh, this is a device that is protected by uh, a Zimperium product. Uh, iPhone 10 with iOS 12.3.2 uh, connected to an unsecured Wi-Fi network. But upon connection, within 15 seconds, that device was pushed, in, was pushed over to a malicious website. That malicious website led to a TLS downgrade within one minute where a secondary malicious website was opened and a suspicious IPA was installed within five minutes. 
Now, this profile that was installed compromised the complete device. It started to, was able to reroute the traffic and change components within the device without the end user knowing. Of course, that was reported back to the uh, security operations center, and they were able to rapidly respond to the threat and mitigate it before it revealed any data or any data was compromised within the enterprise. But this goes to show just how fast malware can be installed on a network attack, even on an iOS device. Now, it's not just iOS I've, picked, I've poked on a little bit over in Turkey. We had a TCP scan leading to an ARP man-in-the-middle attack within three minutes. An SSL strip happened. And so SSL down, downgrade. And so the, the traffic was no longer secure. And sideloaded application was pushed down onto that Android device within two minutes. And that sideloaded application, unfortunately, was malicious in nature. And it had a suspected code within it. The application was shut down. Security Operations Center was notified, and they were able to respond. Now remember, these are enterprise-connected devices. We are an enterprise security company. That's what we focus on. These aren't consumers that are just downloading our application and traveling about. These are individuals that have mobile devices that are protected by their, their employers. And their employers are seeing this threat telemetry come in leaving their devices and their data at risk, but they're now able to respond to the threat that exists. Now, earlier this year, Mo of Ryzen came out with the Mobile Security Index 2022. And the title of their first paragraph was, Mobile is now critical. As I said, it's not just us that's talking about the threat. It's not just us that is coming out there and saying there's something for you to be worried about. Verizon, one of the largest telcos in the United States with a significant amount of resources on a global scale, is coming out and saying the mobile security landscape is now critical for enterprises to begin to address. But the data shows that it should have started being addressed five years ago. The increase of zero-day vulnerabilities used in real-life attacks against mobile endpoints is clearly showing that these devices are critical to the attack chain that the malicious actors are using against enterprises. So in the end, what I want you to walk away with is that mindset that your employer, your organization has invested time and energy into the data and resources that it has produced into the security architecture that has been designed to secure the traditional devices. But if you are not securing all the devices connected into your network, if you are not securing all the data access points that can compromise your systems, you are leaving your vault wide open for the bank robbers to walk in. Because an unaddressed component, unaddressed component to your attack surface means you are not getting the threat telemetry, the ability to respond, mitigate, and prevent the threats that are happening. From zero-day vulnerabilities to phishing links to malicious attacks through networks. And all the way down to the applications, even from app stores, that potentially are compromising credentials your data, spying on your employees, spying on your data, and even ransomware. Without that threat telemetry, without that layer of protection and security, the mobile device is leaving your vault wide open. So uh, realize that it's not 2022, it's 2023. I do apologize, but I want you to stay ahead of the mobile threats. It's time to invest into a zero trust architecture. The idea of never trust, always verify must include mobile. The mobile device is a great identification tool. You have uh, the ability to do a face scan, fingerprint identification, and more to verify constantly the identity of the people accessing the data on all your endpoints. 
And mobile device data is crucial to identity verification. If the mobile phone is in a different country or in a different location uh, physically, then the laptop or data that's being accessed, that's a red flag. It's time to get advanced anti-phishing protection. OEM security is not enough. I, iOS and Android have done a great job with their phishing protection, but it is clearly not enough. The number of phishing attacks that we have seen revealed in the news alone has been extraordinary. Twilio and Cloudflare falling victims to, uh, to phishing attacks without additional layers on Cloudflare, Cloudflare would have been breached, but Twilio was breached. Their data was used, this, this employee's data was used to access Twilio, which then led to an access of 176 Twilio customers, which impacted millions of those customers' data. Because it's not just 176 people's data that was accessed. It's 176 enterprises. Signal was breached due to the Twilio hack. DoorDash was breached due to the Twilio hack and so many more. And when we look at the threat telemetry that came out of it and the response that came from Group IB out of Singapore, who did the rapid response and the, and the incident response for that hack, it took them a month to fully understand which device and how it happened. But with advanced anti-phishing protection, not only will you as, your, as an enterprise and your security team be aware of the phishing attacks that are coming through, you'll have the immediate threat telemetry to lock down and enact any rapid response plans to mitigate any threat to your data. And it helps to prevent the employees from clicking on the links because the links are very, very easy to fall for. Twilio, for example, the website was twi1io.com. And when it appeared on the mobile device, it looked legitimate. Now, phishing is not, it's more than just text and emails. There are QR codes as well. And as QR codes are being used more and more from check into your flight to just reading the menu at the local restaurant, these phishing links all need to be analyzed. More communication tools as well, signal to, uh, Telegram, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, all of these are being used to deliver phishing links. I want you to start treating mobile as an endpoint as well. The amount of data and access each device has is increasing. We have more and more applications installed on our mobile endpoint that are designed to enable us to be productive out in the world. Yet the mobile endpoint represents the largest unprotected asset connected into your enterprise network. Now, it does not matter if it's BYOD or corporate managed, you need to start treating it as an endpoint that deserves the same level of protection that your traditional endpoints are getting. It's time to penetration test every single enterprise application. When was the last time you analyzed the applications that you're using on your mobile device that, you know, this latest product that you purchased to enable your customer, your employees to be effective, or even an application that you have developed and, re and released to the wild? Have you looked for data leaks? Have you looked for the other risks, vulnerabilities? Have you thought about code obfuscation and key protection? As we are seeing more and more, the keys that are being revealed within the applications are being used to access the enterprise data, the record systems. Because if that key is not protected, someone's going to take it and apply it in another way. Just more data for them to use. So when was the last time you did a full analysis of every single application? And check, the ver and check and verify how your enterprise data is actually being used, how it's being transferred, how it's being stored. And finally, I said at the beginning of this webinar, time to not think about mobile device management, mobile access management as security. They are not. They can do base level information gathering and policy enforcement. But these tool sets are not designed to secure against a modern threat. 
Mobile device managements and mobile access managements do not provide phishing protection, network protection, protection against malicious application, side loading application, and more. They don't easily integrate into security operations centers and provide that necessary threat telemetry to protect your data against a modern threat. Simply put, management, it's in the name. It's not security. It's not mobile threat defense. And as I said before, mobile endpoints deserve, need the same level of technical protection and security against the threats as traditional endpoints. We here at Zimperium, we secure mobile. From your data, to your apps, to your devices, to your employees. Our focus is on the mobile world as it exists. Tablets, phones, Chrome OS. We are providing the most advanced endpoint and application security suite on the market. I appreciate your time today. I hope you have a wonderful evening. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at info at Zimperium.com. You can call us at any time. We'll answer the phone as well. Uh, or reach out to us via social media and the email. Thank you so much.